Uh, I don't know if you could hear me, so I'll restart right now. Hey, guys, I'm eating some spaghetti because I had to take my one of my medications, and it makes me a little bit sick sometimes. Like, I typically don't take the full dose, but because I've got an infection in a cracked tooth that I'm going to see the doctor for in a couple days, but I'm probably going to go in the morning and just because they'll let me they'll let you do that at the VA. If you really have an issue, you can go in. You know what I'm saying? And they'll, they'll, if like, if you go in when your doctor's there, they'll schedule you into like in between an appointment or whatever. And I just need some antibiotics for this infection. And it's not too painful. Like I numbed my tooth and it's not too painful, but then the numbing, I don't know what's wrong with me, man. I use numbing medicine and I try not to even swallow it. And it makes me sick. Anyway, I'm bitching. So my whole point is those of you that were asking me if I'm going to stream tonight, I want to, I need to. Honestly, because it's the 19th. Yeah. And I mean, you guys know how it is when you get paid once a month or twice. I get paid twice a month from the military and from um, YouTube. You're going to get be a little bit broke before um, payday. So I should be streaming and working and doing all that. I can't. I'm taking the night off from uh, anything. And um, I just haven't been able to do much today because I've been feeling like shit. But I've still been doing Twitter spaces, and I don't want to bore you guys, so I'm going to shut up. I'm just going to say, follow me, and if you want to support me, the pay link is in the title, paypal.me forward slash unirock. Okay, now, I'm literally just chilling and about to eat some spaghetti. Actually, they're round noodles. I don't know what they're called. I'm going to tell you what they are real quick if we have any more. Nope, the box is gone. Rachel threw it away. They're really, like, round. They're really, really twisted. They're little, like, corkscrew-looking noodles. I mean, that's the best way to describe them. They're pretty big. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> they are Celent... Celentani. Celentani. Damn, they got a lot of vitamins in them, bro. Celentani noodles. And, um, you know, like pasta, like in the spaghetti. And, um really good i usually show you my creations but you can't sh you don't have video on these things <laughs> so i'm kind of sitting here thinking about everything that's gone on like it's just kind of like going through my mind and i'm i'm processing everything and i'm just blown away i am blown away because i've been like i mean this is gonna sound okay i'm a little sick I'm a little bit sick. I got an infection. I tell you that stuff for a reason. I'm going to sound a little bit cringy. You know how when you're not feeling good, uh, even when I'm in massive pain, I've adjusted to it <laughs> because like, you know, I had a hip surgery and an arm surgery and I've had to adjust to pain in my life, physical, you know, pain. And, um, but one thing it does, it doesn't make me sad. Like I see some people and they get really sad when they're sick and in pain. And I've adjusted to it so much that I'm just used to it. But it does make me feel kind of mortal, you know, a little bit like, uh oh, uh, I'm not that healthy. <laughs> so I, I get more cringy in my presentations. I'm just warning everyone <laughs> before I start. But I have made sure to go live and be very deliberate in all of my presentations going back years. They're all deliberate. They're very deliberate, you know? And if I'm not doing a presentation and I'm streaming, I don't really expect people to watch it, but I definitely just give my opinion and I make sure to, if, I, if we bring up something and I haven't shown it on stream, to play it. Because at least, you know, I can't do it all the time. You know how cringy it is when I'm sitting there and I, I try so hard to show these waves of people that would come in the chat from Molly, and this happened with Steve back in the day too, or anyone else, anyone that hates me and goes around defaming me. You know, I, I'm using their word. Normally, I would say lying on me, but because they use that word, I use it now sometimes. But when those waves of people come in, I try, and, and I think it's cringy when I go back and watch the replay to show them the, the truth and the proof because you just, I, I tell myself, I just, should I be able, should I really expect the random viewer? Uh, to be able to know what's going on when they're being so directly lied to. But then I think about it and I'm like, yes, I should. I really should. Yeah, they want to flippantly treat the subject. Then why don't I flippantly treat them? But at the same time, I don't want to do that to someone. I can't tell the difference between someone flippantly treating the subject 
and someone that comes in trying to seriously treat the subject but just not know. And it's just one of those things that bothers me. You know, you'd expect, you'd hope. Like, if other people aren't trying to follow the truth, then what happens is there's no um, right. There's no right, and everything is wrong, right? You know what I mean? It's the best way I can say it. Okay, let me say it like this. What if you had some horrible thing happen to you, and you go to the, 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 the community that you're in, the police or whatever, and you say, this person's hitting me all the time, and it, I've got bruises, and I, my arm, I think, is broken. And they look at you and go, get out of here, and they smack you, right? And, and that's how some communities on YouTube are. They're very primal. They're very, like, tribal, literally. They're very tribal, and they live by their own rules. And you can kind of get a, a, a feeling of how basic human grouping works. Um, like, could you imagine, I don't even know, thousands of years ago, or like back when we were hunters and gatherers, like humans, and there, the social groupings that would happen would be exactly like these communities on YouTube. You'd have some where most people are good. And when someone stands up and goes, oh my God, someone did something bad to me. People come in and they go, well, we want to do the right thing. We want to do the right thing. And we want to not punish an innocent person if you're lying on them. Because they say you're lying on them. But we also don't want to let a uh, guilty person go. And you're stuck, literally, in that conundrum. Can, and could you just imagine what our – and we forget that these are our ancestors because they're so far down the line, but they are. It's exactly the same as you and me. They would have the same minds as you and me, the same problems, as you, the same like desires, needs, and everything as you and I. Anyway, I know it seems off subject, but it's not. Hear me out. Because thinking about – Oh, shit. Navy, you off, man? If you want to jump up here, bro, just raise your hand. Anybody can jump up and raise your hand if, um, you know, it's you're a creator or whatever, or I talk to you in Discord. You don't have to. I get it. Some people are busy. But anyway. So I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, that's what's going on. It's, it, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to be able to verbalize what I'm seeing and, and bring it in an idea to you guys. And I really think the best way is to say that we, if you, if you imagine we're all tribes instead of on YouTube of people that, that intermingle, we'll take little trips over to each other's little villages. We hang out, we talk, we say bye. Hey, thanks for uh, chilling with me. Thanks for smoking that weird grass with me in, the, in your tent because we are hunter gatherers and eating some berries. Num, num, num. I'm going to go home. And on the way home, you get robbed. So you go back to the village because you're closer to them that you're not from, and you tell them, and they're like, get out of here, you fucking liar. You're lying on one of our people, you liar. And, and it's like, no, motherfucker, look at me. I just got jumped. All my shit's gone. Look, oh, my God, you're fucking – that dude right there, that dude that I just met has all my stuff. You just saw me dressed in those clothes. I'm naked now, and he's got my shit. My blood's on that shit. And they're like, oh, we don't care. He says that you gave it to him, and then you fell down. So get out of here. It's like that's what we're dealing with online. You've got a community that these creators, some creators just come in. They put out their content. They want to be judged on their work. They want you to hear them out and apply it and see if you agree with them or not. But then you've got these random creators, and the issue is that there's more of them now than there used to be. Random creators who come in and they build a group of people like Molly or Raid, Rape Pig or Lobster Man, and the group of people around them accept them for doing the worst things, the same things they're sitting there saying, you're a bad person, Katie's a bad person. And it's because they know at least, it, regardless if the greater communities out there, or let's say the world, it's like they're on a different um, – they're on an island in that tribal comparison. And because they're on their own little island and there's like 50 people that hang out on their island, they don't care that they're trying to literally do the horrible things they're doing to the other tribes that aren't on the island is the best way to kind of describe it. And because of that now, the greater community… 
more and more and more people have come in and they've started to follow us. Each time I see T-spiracies in here, every time T-spiracy does a video and it gets a little bit in the algorithm, people are like, damn, she's funny. She's talking about some good shit. I'm a sub. Every time I'm live and I cover a new thing and a bunch of new people come in and, and this happens and this happens and this happens and we start to get bigger and, and eventually we gain the respect. If we put out a long term kind of series of logic and reason, and common sense and, and funny and, and, you know, calling out these things, these these un, I don't know what to say, like an injustice. I don't know that are out there in the YouTube community. Finally, finally, because the mass of people around us grows and grows and grows, creator after creator kind of passes by and experiences the same thing we are. They get harassed the same way they've come at us or whatever. They get uh, their communities, viewers in their communities end up having this happen to them. Finally, people are opening their eyes at the bigger level. Something that I did predict, but yeah, it came about a year later. I said it'd take a couple years. It's taken three. But hopefully this will be, like I'm sitting here saying, what do I want? Like, what do I want? I want these forces like Molly Golightly, these doxers like Steve McRae, these shit lords, as they call us, to just do what we do, which is what everyone does, which is put out your content. And be judged on it, right? If you're going to criticize someone else, do it fairly. Have the have the pass scenario and the fail scenario. And if people agree with you on your pass and fail scenario, play their clip. Make sure you play their words. Respect fair use. Make sure people hear them. That's what I want. I want YouTube back. That's what I want. I want YouTube back where we can actually kind of shine in our own little manner, because what we're doing has been going around calling out people that are, they pick a person like Waxy and they go and they group up and then they dox her and they threaten her and they go after her family behind the scenes. And then in front of the scenes, they just sit and call her names and scream and yell and stomp their feet. And we bust it. We, we put it out. We show the proof. Then, and I could name so many other times we've done it leading up to um, fraud raiser after fraud raiser after like AZ going after rape pig and all this stuff. Fake baby fundraisers, fake cancer. I mean, it's the whole gambit's out there. And Nate the lawyer is the reason why Molly's fundraiser was investigated. Nate the lawyer hopefully will be the reason why um, Steve McCrae's is investigated. And when I say that, it's not because Nate did anything. Nate told us, listen, you've got to have – all you got to do when you see these fraud raisers is have the people go to the local precinct and start filing reports there. And we did it, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's just that little bit of advice, that little bit of like, well, this is how you do it in the real world. And you're like, well, okay, I'll tell them that, and then they, if they do it, there you go. And because of this, we've got a community – where people, everyone in this community, including myself, has donated to a fundraiser and been ripped off or had an internet scam get them or whatever. We've all experienced it. And the thing is, these people are more brazen. It's like at first on the internet, if you've been around when eBay started, first time ever that it started, when it was a lot smaller, okay, when the internet was a lot different before smartphones, um, I ordered a laptop for $326. I think it was a Toshiba satellite, if you recall that model from back in maybe 2000 something, 2002, 2001, 2000. And um, the dude ripped me off. I ended up realizing I could get my money back somehow. But the point I'm making is the same people that used to do those kind of scams where they would just blatantly get your money, close down their accounts and then make new accounts and do it again. Now they go to YouTube and they get up there. And they act like they're either a hero or they're presenting a victim scenario. And then they e-beg for money like you've never seen, saying every promise possible. And then, see, this is the secret, y'all. This is the secret. The behavior of these people is a mixture of them going after people who won't accept them, whether it's a friend, whether it's a sexual thing, whether it's a YouTube relationship. 
And then it's a mix of protecting the core secret, like we've said the whole time. That core secret, obviously, being the fraud raisers, you know? And now that leads us into, of course, take a seat with Chris Hansen and Wes Mose announcing he's going to be having Steve take a seat. So the, the biggest update to that, I'm going to try to do the updates on Twitter when I talk about this. Because Steve, no matter how bad the attention is, he, he literally is running a fraud raiser because he wants me to talk about him on YouTube right now. He reopened a fraud raiser where he knows that he's doing a fraud raiser, like he could get in trouble for it. And he, he did it because he was desperate to have me talk about him or any other, you know, other creators, but talk about any creator. I'm just saying me because I'm me. Talk about him on YouTube. And he has had his fraud raiser turned in. He's using this defense, and then I'll talk about take a seat with Chris Hansen. His defense is GoFundMe lets me do it, so it's not bad. And the thing is, the bank lets you have an account regardless if you steal the money and deposit it, right? You do know this, right? That website is not the investigating agency. It's a fucking payment processor. And it's not even that. They third party the payment processor. It's essentially only to track your donos and pay it to the payee that you set. And they want that payee to be the person or the end point of the money. So the point I'm making is him saying that his fundraiser being on GoFundMe and it not being taken down. That Did you realize the people that are in prison for five years, all three of them. For the homeless person scam that got like 650000 or something. Oh, shit, Navy. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, that homeless fraud raiser that got a bunch of money. Um, it uh, Those people that are in jail for five years, their fundraiser was up for a long time. So, uh, you know, I think Steve doesn't realize that the amount of money he's done with this GoFundMe and fundraiser is definitely above the limit. To where it will be extremely bad for him. That that word felony comes to play. By the way, I don't care if he gets a felony. I don't care if he gets in trouble. I've tried to give him the advice so he won't. In his mind, he thinks that if he leaves it up, he can go around saying that it's good. Not if we can debunk you, buddy. Not if we can show you're lying about what you're doing. Now let's move on to take a seat with Chris Hansen. Now, this is really awesome because I haven't had a chance to tell Navy and talk to Navy about what's happened today. So, Navy, how are you, man? My first time talking to you today. What's up, bro? What's going on, Bubba? Sorry if it's kind of noisy. I'm driving home. But, uh, yeah, tell me about this whole Chris Hansen. Yeah, dude. No, no worries. I'm eating spaghetti right now, which I never do when I'm streaming. So, it's okay. The Chris Hansen thing. So, you, got, you, you saw AZ and Julie Virgo do excellent, excellent jobs breaking down the Westmost stream, right? Oh, yeah, amazing. Both times. It was awesome. And oh, oh yeah. Nice. Well, it, look, it turns out while Wes was watching, I believe both, but it, I saw where he was watching AZs, he got a lot of information given to him by people in the live chat, and I think he realized a lot of stuff by listening to AZ, and I think it explained a lot of the lies, manipulation, um, and the de and the reason why Steve was defending the behavior of his employee, um, the redhead. So, um, yeah, it kind of explained it all. And guess what? Chris Hansen and Wes put out that they want Steve to come take a seat with Chris Hansen. And I'm thinking Steve thinks this is a good idea, right? This is so funny. He's so dumb. well. You know, the thing is, the re I, I do think that. Um, He's about to be exposed for his harassment campaigns. And if Westmost and Hanson can do that, they will get applauded by a lot of fucking people, man. Because it's, it's crazy. Well, I mean, do you, don't, you, don't have a, Go ahead. you don't have a sit down with Chris Hanson so he can tell you how awesome you hey, are. Chris Hanson wants to sit down Steve to talk to him about the RO. I, would, not, I don't know anything. I don't talk to Chris or Wes. I'm going off of what I've seen. So this is an opinion. Make sure I say that because you know these fools, they'll take it any way they can, the, the lobster cult. But anyway, they want him to sit down, not to talk about the redhead, to talk about his harassment campaigns. And you know what the first thing he said was? You know, yesterday 
he wanted to talk to Chris Hansen. Or when he talked to Wes Mose, he wanted to talk to Chris and settled with Wes, okay? He wanted to talk to Chris so bad, sitting there, oh, yeah, let me talk to Chris Hansen. Let me talk to Chris Hansen. Um, and, and when he talked to Wes, he, like, you know, lied his ass off and tried to manipulate him. Um, so the point is, now that Chris is saying, yo, bro, come on. Well, I'll take a seat with you. We're good. You know, he got what he wanted. That's what's, this was what he's not saying on Twitter. He fucking did this himself. This is how fucking crazy this dude is, Navy. He went straight as this harasser of a woman online, many of them, but mainly a woman online for three years who he had an RO against him and how he signed an NDA and bent the knee and bowed down and didn't sue her and kept the money. And he had the nerve to he's some is he fucking nuts to go to Chris Hansen after doing all this? He went to him. He went to him, Navy. <laughs> he's he's out of his mind, dude. <laughs> so you know, now after Chris says, okay, come have a seat, can you guess what Steve said? Did, did you see it? <laughs> Um, I saw something about trying to expose you or something. Really? I haven't even seen that yet. Well, he did. Something like he was going to bring all these receipts and people going after him or something. I don't know. What, what no, no. But well, so here's what happened. After um, Chris said, come have a seat, Steve ran away like a coward and said, I will not go and participate in this LARP. He tried to say that Chris Hansen was LARPing. Then he tweeted and said, Chris is... Uh, going to paint me as the as the perpetrator when I'm the victim. <laughs> Literally, he tweeted this. Then he said, I will not go to Chris Hansen. I want my sister wives to go. I want Rennell and I want Nikki to go. And of course, Chris and Wes are like, what the fuck, bro? Why would you send two women or one woman to come fill in for you instead of you coming? That's insane. So everybody online just fucking blew up like you're a fucking coward bitch you want to sue her and then you don't and it gets dismissed with prejudice because you didn't file you want to still sit here and claim that you're innocent instead of proving it in court when you ran a fundraiser and had the money to do it now chris hansen is going to take your evidence of how bullied you are by katie joy paulson and put it in front of all of these fucking people dude massive he could go to chris and all the evidence that he said is secret and that he pretends to have could be put on display for the world to see all that evidence that uni rocks lying about and, and az is lying about and navy and menace are lying about right put it on fucking display then then you can fucking uh, beat – you can beat Katie forever and prove these people trolls like he's been claiming. The problem is that secret evidence that he'll never show anyone publicly, uh, he won't take it to Chris Hansen now that he's got this giant platform to put it on and show anybody it. And in the end, he said, I will go to Chris Hansen and talk to him if – Katie Joy Paulson also must go to Chris Hansen and talk to him. And you know what? Oh, yeah. That's what he said. Now, I don't think he meant at the same time, obviously. He just wants both to go. No, but why does he feel like he gets to dictate a damn thing in this? <laughs> this is a fucking reporter. One of the most famous fucking reporters back when he was working, dude. Sure, Chris has had his issues after that. But everybody knows this man. I would say anyone that watched TV in like what the '90s knows who Chris Hansen is, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Seriously, because like there was no the there was an internet, but it was just you know the it was an internet for the internet people. If you had it was a computer driven internet, so you had to have an expensive PC. They were a couple thousand bucks, and you had to know how to operate MS DOS. You had to know how to type in the codes. You had to know how to fucking you know, maintain Windows 95, 98, ME, 2000, all that shit, right? So it was a smaller internet, and, and that's why Hansen being on television at that time, that's what everybody watched. Television isn't what it was now. The internet's way bigger, and everything's everybody's on it. So Hansen, that's why Hansen was more of a national figure then. And you've got this dude. Hold up. 
And you've got the son of a bitch. You've got this dude who's willing to grab he, all the secret evidence he pretends to have of everyone going after him when no one's. I, I know the only thing I've ever done to him is make YouTube videos. They're all public for anyone to see. He could grab it. Whatever he has a problem with my content, take it to Chris Hansen and expose me finally in front of the whole fucking YouTube. But he's, he hasn't even exposed me on his own channel. All he's ever said is that he has secret evidence. So this is his perfect opportunity. I think this is, the, uh, this is where he either proves that he has his secret evidence or he admits he doesn't have any. This should be that moment. There will never be a bigger moment. Well, this should be the moment where he comes out with Chris Hansen and proves what he told to Wes about you and AZ, right? That y'all are bigger predators than Jesse because y'all claimed, which no one's ever heard, y'all claimed that he was the leader of a sex cult. That neither one of you ever said. It was pretty Yeah, funny. I, I said sure he that, was you know, leading an internet Discord. cult. I didn't say it was a sex cult. Now, I described how they did use sex in order to maintain their cult because they did use sex to maintain their cult. Um, they would go to uh, atheist conventions and then have a bunch of fucking sex parties. And then Steve and his buddies would come back, get drunk, go on stream and describe them. We have those archives. So he knows what we've said. He something it's not to call us liars in fucking cult where he did lure women in that he did take them and he had his like quote unquote girlfriend sweet heathen be the central figure in the hotel room getting banged by five dudes the one the two of the dudes were there while steve admitted to sitting in the corner watching i've played this clip like three times laughing at him he thinks me laughing at his cuckness <laughs> somehow is the worst harassment in the world. Well, this is what you do, lol cow. You don't go live and say it if you don't want someone to react to it, right? Now, I could understand if I fucking did what he did and get some psycho to try to frame me as having a sexual conversation with her to break me up with my girlfriend, then harass me constantly for fucking two months or three months with constant sexual content thrown at me where steve then took it and then retweeted it and then tried to boost it at me and convince his friends to boost it at me if i was doing something like that i guess he'd have an argument but all i've ever done is do days of our live streams and laugh at the ridiculous of him the, the ridiculousness of him and that somehow paints us to be the omega troll you know, because we get more views, more attention, more people watch us and he's jealous. So that makes us trolls. That's reality. What I just described is reality. Now, if he has a problem with the way he lies to people, the way he manipulates people, the way he meets up and has sex with these women, with a bunch of his male friends. If he has a problem with us talking about this, describing it to people. You know, that's what happened because he presented himself as a different person, an intellectual philosopher who spent his time going in and reading and creating philosophy papers and discussing very complicated like college level stuff. And we said, no, dude, you're a homeless bum that tries to manipulate women into having sex parties with you by pretending to be a philosopher. And eventually when he took that to the extreme, we called it a cult. And I think I still could make the argument that he was a cult leader. What he doesn't understand is when his cult broke up, we told everybody that it broke up and stopped calling him a cult leader. We called him a failed cult leader. So we've been very fair to describe him for exactly what he is. Don't you agree, Navy? <laughs> oh, no, 100%. Like, he is like the world's best failure. That boy can fail. Oh, yeah, he can. Stairs. And Fail harder than anyone else. Can. You can't like he can't cry about Chris Hansen wanting to have a seat with his ass when he did it. Look, I'm getting a, uh, text messages. I'm gonna jump off here, but then I'm gonna restart the stream here in a minute, okay? Because we got to talk about this for All a right. second. I don't know. I, I and you probably need time to get home and everything, and hopefully you can jump in. If you can, it's fine when I restart, but we'll see what happens. Oh, sweet no, man, give me twenty minutes or less later. 
Hey, and when I come back, if any of you guys want to talk during this, please let me know. Join the Discord. There, I put links out. And uh, if you're just a viewer, all I ask is that maybe you come in and say, you know, I'm not going to drop any end bombs or anything if I come on and, I, you know, I'm going to talk. So I'll let you talk. I just want to make sure you're cool as all. Like, you're, you know, not cool as in, like, you can, you can even come in and criticize me if you don't like me. I just got to make sure that the people who talk don't abuse the platform. You get me? All right. We'll be back in a minute. I'm going to eat some sketty, curly sketty noodles.